Did you know that it is possible to cook your food using very little fuel? Hi, I'm Kyleen, the Provident Prepper. Retained heat cooking, or thermal cooking as it's also known as, is a great way to significantly reduce the amount of fuel that is required to cook a meal. In this video, we'll discuss retained heat cooking and show you a few tips and ways that you just might be able to create your own retained heat cooker out of items that you already have in your home. Knowledge is power, and the knowledge and ability to use retained heat cooking may just make the difference when times become hard. Stay with us. Retained heat or thermal cooking is a fantastic way for you to stretch your fuel resources, particularly in an emergency. But don't underestimate the power and the convenience of using thermal cooking every day. Sherry asked us if we would do a video on the Wonder Oven or fireless cooking. And so Sherry, this one's for you. Retained heat cooking uses a variety of different devices and each one has their own unique little twist on it, but it all comes down to the same principle. You might see some of these devices called thermal cookers, hay box, straw box, insulated cooker, retained heat cooker, fireless cooker, wonder oven, wonder box, wonder cooker. I wonder why. It's because it's so fantastic. You can use almost any device that will allow you to comply with these basic principles. First, the food has to be brought to a complete boil and every piece of food needs to be heated completely through before transferring it to the retained heat cooker. Use a tight fitting lid so that no heat or steam has the ability to escape. And then we need at least four inches of insulation on all sides of the cooking vessel. And remember, air is your enemy. We wanna make sure that we fill the pot the best that we can, 80% capacity is ideal. And there should be no gaps in the insulation around the cooking vessel. And finally, no peaking. If you open the lid and peak, you're gonna lose a tremendous amount of heat and you may not be able to finish cooking your meal. So no peaking, resist the temptation. Let's start out with thermal cookers, which are generally the commercially made products that are available on the market. On the left, we are cooking steel cut oats. We did this by boiling water and apples and then adding the steel cut oats. We put the lid on the pot. We put it inside the thermal cooker and closed the lid and we let it do its magic. This is our thermos cooking carry that we use on a regular basis. It's still in great condition, even though it's 15 years old. So if you buy a good quality product, it will last a good long time and do a great job. Now technology has improved somewhat over time. And so the products that you can buy today are even better than the one that we got. If we are cooking something that's going to take a long time, we also wrap it with a baby blanket just to add another layer of insulation. This is a wonder oven. It was purchased from Megan Smith at myfoodstoragecookbook.com. It's made of a washable cotton fabric and is filled with styrofoam beads. The bottom pillow is slightly larger than the top pillow. The one great advantage to the Wonder Oven is that it will accommodate a wide variety of pots so you can use almost any pot that you already have in your kitchen. I like to put this inside of a laundry basket. You can also use a tote. It doesn't have to be placed in there, but it's easier to move and to tuck away if it's in this. The first thing I did was put a little blanket at the bottom and then I put that bottom pillow on. You don't have to add that additional layer of insulation, but remember the more insulation you have, the better it will retain the heat. And then I opened up the center of that pillow, put in the pot, snugged it all tight around it, and then I just put the pillow on the top and we can just let that sit on the counter and work its magic. One of the important things to understand is that food may be cooked in three hours, but if I don't want to eat until six hours later or eight hours later, I can just leave that alone and it'll be ready whenever our family is ready to eat. Insulation is everything. So some of the time, depending on what I'm cooking in there, I will wrap it in an additional blanket to improve that insulation, especially if it's gonna be in there for six, eight, 10 hours. When you're ready to use that food, you're going to simply take that top pillow off and remember that pot is going to be hot. Safe serving temperature is 140 degrees. In this case, we're still at 174 degrees. So we're well within the safe serving limit. And most of the time, I don't even check it with a the thermometer anymore. If it's too hot for me to eat, 
then it is still within the safe serving temperature. But while you're getting the hang of this, it would be a really good idea to check that temperature until you're more familiar with it so that you can gain the confidence that you need and make sure that the food is safe for your family. If it has ever fallen below 140 degrees, then you have created the optimal environment for bacteria to grow. If it's less than 140 degrees, take it out, put it back on the stove, and bring it to a rolling boil to make sure that you kill any bacteria that has grown. Steel food jars or thermoses are a highly convenient way to use thermal cooking in your everyday life, especially if you're only cooking for one or two people. There are thermoses out there that are incredible. You can purchase steel food jars or thermoses that are rated to retain that heat for four hours or even up to 22 hours. Depending on what your need is, the one that you're looking at right here is only rated for five hours, which is great if you're only using it for your lunch every day. But if you are going to be making your food in the morning and then eating it at dinner time, it's important that you purchase a much more efficient thermos. In this thermos, we have ramen noodles, which when I sent this to school with my kids, they were always trading it with the other kids to get candy and goodies that I didn't send with them, although ramen's not that healthy of a food. But you would be amazed how excited the other kids at school were for my kids' lunch. When cooking with a thermos, it's important that you preheat that thermos with hot water. Let the hot water sit in there for five or 10 minutes, dump it out, and then add the boiling food or the boiling water and the dry grain. Then shake it to mix it and place the thermos on its side to cook. It will still cook in the upright position, but you'll have more even distribution of the ingredients if you cook it on its side. And we, as usual, always wrap it in some type of insulation to improve the efficiency of the thermos. We were challenged to cook dinner using the least amount of fuel possible. In order to accomplish this, we decided to combine different techniques so that we could save fuel. First, we used a rocket stove to bring the food to a boil because rocket stoves only use sticks and are highly fuel efficient. We put soaked dried beans and all of the spices inside of a pressure cooker. A pressure cooker will cook much more efficiently than a regular pot. Once we brought that pressure cooker just up to pressure, we transferred it to the Wonder Oven and covered it up. And then a few hours later, we opened it up and ate dinner using only a few sticks to cook the entire meal. If you click the card in the corner, you'll be able to see the video that we created after this cooking challenge. Wonder cookers, boxes, ovens come in a variety of different shapes and sizes. This one happens to be a Wonder Box and it is made out of more rigid material so that the pot fits directly in it and snugly. However, you can only use that pot. You could use another pot, I guess, that was similar and then tuck other insulation in around it, but it is designed for use with this pot. And this Wonder Cooker has the pillow on the bottom and it's placed in this round tote and then you put the pillow on the top and you can carry it around. The round tote offers a little bit of additional insulation and it's pretty convenient to carry it around in this tote. But let's not stop there. Use your imagination and create something like we did here with just an ice chest. In this case, we put blankets in the bottom of this, blankets around the side and on top and then close the lid and it did a great job. We had a friend in one of our classes mention that they had used a bathtub and done the same thing. The principle is what really matters here. This ugly retained heat cooker was our first experimentation with retained heat cooking and we called it a hay box. We made it using only things that we had around the house. We have lots of diaper boxes, so I decided to use that for the base and then I lined it with some rigid foam that I would have thrown away anyway. And then I used a few small towels kind of to make sure I got rid of the air gaps and just because the rigid foam is very square. And so I wanted to make it nice and snuggly for the pot. And then I lined it with a reflective material and put a pressure cooker in there. Most of the time I used a pressure cooker just because of the efficiency. Then I topped it all off with a bean bag and put another diaper box on top. And it actually performed incredibly well. What was our record? We went 16 hours and the temperature was still above 170. So it did just an amazing job for a long period of time. The insulation was fantastic, but there was definitely a design flaw. We didn't realize the amount of moisture that would be absorbed by the insulative material. And pretty soon, after a few months, 
it started to stink. And because we were mostly cooking beans, it started to really stink. And I ended up having to throw it away. But it was a great experiment because we discovered that we can make a retained heat cooker just using things that we have on hand. As you're designing yours, make sure whatever you use for insulation is washable. You can really use hay or straw or leaves, but those will all just need to be replaced over time. These are a couple of the commercial warmers that the Red Cross uses in their emergency shelters. I thought that was, was really fascinating. So what they do is they actually cook the food and then they slide it into these insulated containers and they're portable. They can take them wherever they need to when they're feeding a crowd, but that's what they do to keep it warm. This military insulated canvas bag is a perfect candidate for a retained heat cooker. It's insulated to begin with, and then it has a strap so that it's nice and portable. There's a problem because there's air gaps. So what we need to do is just line the bottom with a blanket or a towel, put the pot in, snug it all up nice and tight, and then re-zip it. And it would make a really good retained heat cooker. And now it's time for me to sing the praises of retained heat cooking. I personally believe that it is an incredible solution for saving fuel. First of all, there's no tending. Once you tuck that cooking vessel into the retained heat cooker, there's nothing else that can happen. It's just gonna cook the food. You don't have to stir it. You don't have to worry about it burning or anything catching on fire. It's just there. There's no evaporation. So you actually can use less water when you cook things. It's fantastic when it comes to fuel conservation. You can use significantly less fuel when you employ retained heating practices in your cooking. It's safe to use indoors. It doesn't produce any toxins. There's no fire risk. It's just safe and it's portable. You can put this in the back of the car and take it with you. You can move it to different places. It's just a great solution. It all comes down to insulation. In general, you want at least four inches of insulation all the way around. Commercial cookers do vary in efficiency, so you want to make sure that you get a really good quality product. And increased insulation equals increased efficiency. To learn more about retained heat cooking, Google the Provident Prepper. Thermal cookers, powerful solution for efficient emergency cooking. Also check out our YouTube channel. On there, we have several videos where we use the retained heat cookers during our grid down cooking challenge. Check it out. Cooking with retained heat is so much easier than you may imagine. Be brave and start developing skills so that you can cook using retained heat for you and your family. And now for the question of the day. What experience do you have using retained heat for cooking? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.